The Portuguese armed forces are the military of the Republic of Portugal. They consist of three professional uniformed branches, the Portuguese Navy, the Portuguese Army and the Portuguese Air Force. The President of the Portuguese Republic is the Armed Forces Commander-in-Chief while their administration and the defense policy execution is done by the government via the National Defense Ministry. The highest-ranking officer is the Armed Forces Chief of the General Staff, which has complete control over the military when a state of war exists and operational control during peacetime. The Focus Armadas are charged with protecting the Republic and its overseas territories as well as supporting international peacekeeping efforts. When mandated by the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, United Nations and or European Union, Recent operations include anti-piracy action in the Gulf of Aden, the conflict in Afghanistan, peacekeeping missions in East Timor, Lebanon, Kosovo and Bosnia-Herzegovina, and air policing of Iceland and the Baltic states. Military units are maintained throughout the country, both on the mainland and on the archipelagos of Madeira and Azores. History Background The history of the Portuguese military itself begins in the 12th century with the creation of the Kingdom of Portugal. The naval and ground forces would remain independent from each other for hundreds of years. By the 20th century some joint military and national defense bodies had been created but these had mostly mere political coordination, responsibilities. The administration of the several forces of the military remained in charge of separate government departments, respectively the Navy Ministry for the Navy, the War Ministry for the Metropolitan Army and the Colonies Ministry for the Colonial Forces while operationally the service branches were completely independent from each other. During the 1930s plans were laid to merge all of the previously mentioned ministries under a single one named Defense Ministry. However, the service branches wished to maintain their autonomy represented by their separate government departments, thus politically opposing and preventing this reorganization for the next couple of decades. Nevertheless, the need to defend the overseas empire against possible foreign aggression during World War II did lead to a significant step being taken during this period for an increased integration of the several military services. When the Focus Coloniais were placed under the dependency of the Ministerio da Guara, which then became in charge of all Portuguese ground forces. Post World War II lessons learned from World War II. The start of the Cold War and the creation of NATO partially ended the objections for the creation of a unified command for the military forces. In 1950, the roles of National Defense Minister and Armed Forces Chief of the General Staff are created. To the CEMGFA were given almost all the responsibilities until then assigned to the commanders of the service branches, whose roles were at the same time extinct. This is widely considered the beginning of the Portuguese Armed Forces. However, opposition from both military branches prevented the formation of a single ministry for the military. The political solution for this was the creation of the role of National Defense Minister but without its own ministry, instead integrating the government's Council of Ministers. The Ministro da Defesa a national directed an umbrella organization named the National Defense Department which included the CEMGFA, the National Defense General Secretariat and the Aeronautics Under Secretariat. Besides this, the minister had the role of coordinating the excess ITA and marina ministries. Only in 1974 would the SGDN be transformed into a full military staff organization and renamed Armed Forces General Staff. Despite all the issues, in the 1950s the operational integration of the Focus Armadas did progress, with the establishment of the roles of Commander-in-Chief for the military forces based in each of the colonial territories. Mainly during the overseas war, these commanders would assume increasing responsibilities, until achieving full operational command of all forces assigned to their theater of operations, leaving the territorial service branch leadership with logistical responsibilities. The aviation of the marina and excess emerged in 1952. 
leading to the creation of the Air Force and its integration in the Focus Armadas as its third military service branch. Unlike the other services which had their own separate ministries, the Fokker area was directly dependent on the Ministerio da Defesa National via the Subsecretariado de Estado da Aeronautica. In 1961 this department would be renamed Aeronautics State Secretary. In 1953, the National Republican Guard ceased policing the military, with the foundation of the military police by the exercita. Later the other services would create their respective military police type forces, the air police for the Fokker area and the naval police for the marina. Overseas conflicts between 1961 and 1974, the Fokker Armadas would be engaged against emerging nationalist movements in several of the Portuguese African provinces. A conflict known as the Overseas War in Portugal and as Liberation War in the former provinces. In the scope of the Cold War, it was a decisive ideological struggle and armed conflict in African and European scenarios. Unlike other European nations, the Portuguese regime did not leave its African overseas provinces during the 1950s and 1960s. Several armed independence movements most prominently led by communist parties who cooperated under the CONCP umbrella and pro-US groups became active in these areas. The Focus Armadas were able to maintain a large military campaign for 13 years in these three different theaters of operations, thousands of kilometers apart from each other and from the mainland. This was achieved with almost no external support. In contrast with the nationalist movements which were backed by communist countries and even by some Western ones, the Exesita suffered the majority of the casualties with 8,290 soldiers killed in action while the Fokker area lost 346 airmen and the Marina 195 sailors. During the conflict, in each theater of operations, the operational command of the forces of the Marina, Exesita and Fokker area was successively transferred from each territorial service branch command to joint commands, led by the Fokker Armada's commander for that specific theater. Thus the three branches of the military were able to achieve a high level of operational integration, allowing for an effective cooperation between them, the optimization of their scarce assets and the ability to fight as a single cohesive force. The logistics side was not able to reach such high levels of integration, mainly because each service branch continued to be administered by its own government department with its own supply chain and standards. Due to the nature of the conflict, commando-type forces achieved great importance. With the war's evolution, these assumed almost all of the mobile and offensive operations, with the more conventional forces remaining responsible for the defensive assignments. By 1961, each service branch had created its own light infantry force oriented for asymmetric warfare. The Fokker area created the parachute rifles in 1956. The XSI first raised the special rifles which were later replaced by the commandos in 1962 and the marina deployed the marines. A force reactivated in 1961. The Portuguese military also counted with a number of paramilitary forces, including the special groups and the arrows. The Focus Armadas were also involved in a brief conventional armed conflict with the Indian military, when the latter invaded the Portuguese India in December 1961, facing overwhelmingly superior forces and after 36 hours of combat, the Portuguese India Commander-in-Chief, General Vassilo E. Silva surrendered to the Indian Army. The Indian Armed Forces officially recognized to have suffered 76 casualties during the invasion. Democratic Republic on the morning of 25 April 1974, the Armed Forces movement, consisting mostly of junior officers of the three service branches, launched a coup d'état, known as the Carnation Revolution, which would bring an end to the new state regime and shortly the Guerra do Ultramar, while the revolt included several military units located on the mainland. 
The forces that departed the cavalry school led by Captain Salguero Mayo were the ones that managed to capture dictator Marcelo Catano after a standoff at the GNR's headquarters. However, after the revolution and for about a year and a half, the Portuguese military would be split into several political factions. By the summer of 1975, the tension between these was so high that the country was on the verge of civil war. The forces connected to the extreme left wing launched a further coup d'état on 25 November but the Group of Nine, a moderate military faction, immediately initiated a counter-coup. The main episode of this confrontation was the successful assault on the barracks of the left-wing military police regiment by the forces of the Commandos Regiment, resulting in three soldiers killed in action. The Grupo dos Nova emerged victorious, thus preventing the establishment of a communist state in Portugal and ending the period of political instability in the country. The National Defense Ministry, headed by the Ministro da Defesa Nacional, would be created during this period of instability. However the minister had no power over the Forcas Armadas, his role was simply to act as a connection between the military and the government. It was the Revolution Council, consisting only of military officers and chaired by the President of Portugal, that had control over the Forcas Armadas which meant these were completely independent from the civilian administration. The Ministerio da Guerra, Ministerio da Marina and the Secretaria de Estado da Aeronautica were extinct, with each service branch chief of staff assuming the roles of the former ministers under the coordination of the CEMGFA, to whom was given a status equivalent to that of the Prime Minister of Portugal. This organization would remain in place until 1982, when the Consulo da Revolução was disbanded after the first revision to the 1976 constitution. The Forcas Armadas were again placed under the subordination of the civilian administration, more specifically under the MDN. With the decolonization and the end of the Guerra de Ultramar, the Portuguese military would change from an asymmetric to a conventional force in order to defend Western Europe from a possible Soviet invasion. However the collapse of the USSR would trigger another transformation, since the Forcas Armadas gradually became more expeditionary oriented, participating in several independent international missions or under the mandate of the United Nations, European Union or NATO. Meanwhile the 1980s would see the creation of special operations, namely the Special Operations Forces and the Special Actions Detachment. In 1990 the Forca area would create combat rescue teams for CSAR operations but in 2006 these were extinct and replaced by the Force Protection Unit whose mission is to provide security for Forca area forces deployed on international missions. Conscription for the Forcas Armadas ceased in 2004. Recent in April 2013, the Portuguese government approved a structural reform of the national defence, named Defence 2020. It was done with the objective of defining the level of ambition of the Forcas Armadas by establishing the guidance parameters for strategic planning, reinforcing the leading responsibility of the CEMGFA in the execution of the approved military strategy, reducing human resources while at the same time improving their management and enhancing the coordination between the EMGFA, the branches of the Forcas Armadas and the MDN. Defense 2020 establishes the existence of three force sets, immediate reaction force, a high readiness force, focused in missions such as the evacuation of Portuguese citizens in crisis or conflict areas and response in national complex emergency situations. Sovereignty Action Permanent Forces – Forces focused in the continuous missions of national sovereignty or jurisdiction areas of national responsibility, including the air defense, the maritime and aerial patrolling, surveillance and inspection, land surveillance when required, search and rescue and finally, the nuclear, biological, chemical and radiological defense, public interest and disaster response.
Modular forces set, forces assigned to Portuguese international commitments deployed for periods of six months, capable of engaging in three simultaneous minor operations or in a single major operation. These forces are known as national detached forces.